Good morning, guys. We are going to Croom today. We're going to check out the trails over there and... No clay pits. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see if there's any mud over there, but I have a feeling probably not just because it's been so dry lately. And we have Jimmy with us. Hey, guys. <laughs> we yeah. actually went out last night and did some uh, driving. We checked out a cemetery that's close to Older Mine campground there, and it... Uh, Pretty much all the graves were like 18, late 1800s. And not a huge cemetery, you know, maybe what, five, six, seven, I don't know, gravestones that we could see in the dark. But that was fun. And then we ended up hitting some trails in the dark and the ditch lights. Wow. All I can say is the ditch lights work amazing. Look at that. Look how bright these are. Off. money well spent so i will leave a link down in the description below if you're looking for some nice three inch pod lights these things lit up the whole forest so much so that when i turned them off as we were coming back in i literally felt like i was driving in the dark at that point like i turned my headlights off <laughs> so <clears throat> very happy with that purchase so this week while we're camping here at holder mine we're going to test out a new little product this was actually sent to us by all powers it is a S200 portable power station and it is a 200 watt continuous power bank that also has a cool little feature where you can charge your cell phone on the top. So we're going to see if, how handy this is and how useful it is for us sitting out, you know, at a campfire or by the picnic table. Be able to, you know, have a little power out there. Nothing big, but uh, enough to charge our cell phones and maybe run a little fan for the summertime when it's hot. So we're gonna put it through some paces and we'll let you know. I'll go ahead and unbox it and see what we actually have in the box. All right, so I've got it plugged in. As I'm charging it, I'm reading the directions here. A couple cool things I'm noticing. It says that it can be charged through a solar panel. You just have to buy a separate cable for that. And it's saying in the instructions basically what it can run. So it can charge your smartphone up to 17 recharges. You can use an LED 10 watt light for 12 hours. You can use a small fan for 25 hours. Um, the thing that I think we would like is the laptop. It will run a laptop, three recharges. And another thing I think that would be very cool for us and beneficial to us is our mini fridge. It says it will run a mini fridge for three hours. Okay, so I've got the all powers, little 200 watt power bank working here to use my TV. So it can run a TV. Yeah, I'm using 19 watts. I'm using 6 watts on my phone charging it. So, Jimmy did all this work. Replaced the ceiling all this with cedar nice little led lights big uh, double bed in the front they took the bed from the back he was saying made a couch out of it all this back here is storage very great use of space very nice very cold in here too that air conditioner is pumping out DAC. So I think Jimmy's going to talk about making a channel of his own. And he's going to explain how he rebuilt this from the ground up, basically. As the, uh, I believe the ceiling was completely all rotted out. So he had to do a lot of work. It's got a nice TV mount. It's even got a sound bar above the door. Everything you need. Very cool. He did a great job on this. Hey guys, well, this morning we are heading out on a trail here in Inverness. We have Dave and Melissa with us. We have the Stevensons here with us again, and we have some other friends that we're camping with for the first time in their new RV, Jimmy and Amanda. We are heading to Dame's Cave. This will be our third time, right? I think going to the cave. Third or fourth time, yeah. 
It's a beautiful day. So we ended up checking out Peace Cave while we were there. And this was Allie and I's second time checking out the Peace Cave. We all float down here. <laughs> After checking out the caves, we went back, had some lunch, and then ended up doing some more off-roading. Now this time we were very careful to make sure that we were traveling on the forest roads up there that were open. We did make sure we looked for signs saying road closed. And they are pretty well marked once you know what to look for. They are smaller signs. But we also used a new app called Trails Off-Road and we could also double check with that app just to make sure that these roads are open. We didn't want to get in any kind of trouble doing anything that we were not supposed to do. Oh, oh boy. At this point in the day, we noticed a stuck motor that Jamie had to use his toe strap and hook it to the truck and pull him out. And luckily, he was able to get himself turned around and he was able to get back on the trail and motor through. He was able to barrel through the sand. Like a pro. Are you gonna go try to do some of those uh, crazy... Uh, Maybe. You know, things like yeah. I did? I don't know what you call them. I don't know if I could do the one that, that was really bad, like, like you did. Yeah. But that didn't sound good. No, it didn't. <laughs> That's a pretty... A pretty stiff branch. Yeah. It's all right. That's okay. all we need to do is snag the top of our soft top. <laughs> Are you a little disappointed you haven't found any mud? No. Really? <gasps> oh my God. It'll happen when it's supposed to happen. <laughs> when the rainy season starts? That's right. Yeah. It'll be something to look forward to when we come back. Right. There's uh we've seen plenty of sugar sand though. Allie's taking her first big run. No. Nope. <laughs> there I go. You looked a little tense there. <laughs> You're like all humped up over the steering wheel. I'm just look trying to lean forward. So we spent the better part of two days just driving all the trails that we could drive. Actually probably ran a whole tank of gas through the Bronco, but so much fun. And hold her mind, this time was not very packed. It was kind of surprising that uh, there was quite a few open sites. We've been there before when it's super, super packed. Well, we've made it back home from our camping trip and we didn't find mud, but... Found a lot of dust. A lot of dust. And uh, we're getting ready to get a Zulu bath. Yeah, and a lot of dust on the inside too, so... Oh yeah, it's gonna be a big project. I don't know which is worse, mud or dust, but uh, we're gonna find out. We're gonna wash her up and uh, see how hard it is to clean her back up. Well, she's all clean, back to the way she was. How long did it take us to do it? What time is it? I know we started about 6.30. 6.30? Took us an hour. Took us an hour to wash her up and clean her up. Yeah. There's still, oh yeah, there's still some remnants underneath in some of the wheel wells and stuff. But at least we got the body clean. No scratches, Thank no chips. Thank goodness. I think we made it out unscathed our first time we had a great time this weekend yeah for sure and we've been picking rocks out of the tires for the past uh, probably five ten minutes too and there's still a ton of them in there but i tell you what i think that uh that torx detailing uh spray really did help protect it's just smooth as glass again time to put her to bed for tonight <laughs>